Hi guys, welcome to Cranble. James Villiers here. Um, so I've got some lovely dishes today for you guys which are Easter orientated. Um, I'm going to do some food for you, what I would probably do at home for my wife and my child. Um, and I'm going to start today with leg of lamb. So what we're going to do with this lovely bit of leg of lamb, oil, get that on there. Don't be worried about the calories, put that out the window. It's a bank holiday at least, so you're going to be having a few jars as well. So we're going to get that right on there, get right the way around it. Don't worry about getting your hands nice and dirty. Get on there. Then what we're going to do, bit of Susie salt, bit of Percy pepper as Ainsley would say. Make sure when you're doing it that you do both sides as well. Don't just stick to one side of skin. Just forget, calories go out the window for this one day. It's the first bank holiday since Christmas, so enjoy yourselves. Right then, so that's it. The leg of lamb is ready to go. I've got the oven preheated to 200 degrees and we're going to leave it in there for 45 minutes. Bring it out and let it rest. While that's in there cooking, I'm going to start on the gravy next, okay? So all we're going to do is just a, a fancy, a bit of a fancy gravy here. It's a chef's gravy, so you're going to pick up a few good tips. Get a pan nice and hot. Have that going. I've got some shallots cut. We've got a few shallots and a few bits of garlic. So that we're just going to naturally caramelise in the pan. Get a nice bit of colour onto it. And that's going to help bring a nice bit of rich sweetness to your, uh, to your gravy. A good way to test to make sure it's getting hot. Just put the back of your hand in. The back of your hand's quite sensitive to heat. So just get it in there. You can feel it starting to get hot. All right then. So we're going to stick those in there. Get these babies going. Then to that, what I'm going to add, just got a lovely bottle of red wine. I'm going to put a few glasses into that. We're going to do it Keith Floyd style. And I've bought a chicken stock. You don't really want to have anything strong because obviously lamb is quite a, a unique flavour in itself. You don't want to get a lamb stock or anything because it's going to overpower it. So all we're going to do is just really reduce that chicken stock down to intensify the flavour of it. You can add whatever you want to this as well. I mean, I've just gone for shallots and garlic. If you want it because it's lamb, you can put a bit of rosemary in there. That'll be really nice. Or another good one to do is just get some fresh mint. If you've got some mint in your garden, just rip off a good handful and chuck that in as well. And that's going to really complement the lamb as well. So like I say, key Floyd it. Don't be scared. So I'm probably going to go for about two glass worths of wine. So that's probably going to be around the 250 mil mark. So just do it so you just cover in your shallots and your garlic. Just so it's just nicely submerged in that red wine. And then we're just going to bring that down by half. So you're cooking off the alcohol and reducing it so you're getting a lovely bit of flavour into that as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to get ready to do the roast spuds. So what I've done is I've just got a, a bag of normal white potatoes and I've just part boiled them. So by part boiling them, they've got to be soft but they've also got to be a little bit hard, okay? But they should sort of break and hold their shape a little bit. So with those, what I've got, I've got a pan with oil in. I've been very, very, very liberal with the oil because you want to use that hot oil to get a good color on the skin. So all I'm going to do is put some garlic into the oil. Now you should know that it's ready because it's going to roast them as soon as they go in. And then all I'm going to do very delicately is drop in the potatoes. All I'm going to do as well, a bit of pepper and a bit of salt. Not too much on the pepper front, but loads of salt. So in a way, pretty much all you're doing here now is shallow frying these. And I'm just shallow frying them to get the colour started on the outside. And then when I think they've got a good bit of roast on them, I'm going to whack them straight in the oven. But when they're in the oven, I'm not going to forget about them. I'm going to keep turning them, keep turning them so they're going to be nice and crispy all the way around. So you're going to keep them moving around. You see they're starting to colour up really well. All right then, so because these are going to go in the oven, what I'm also going to do, get my other pan sorted, because I've also cooked off a few bits of roast root veg. So all I've done with these is just cooked them off in water. So you've got some whole carrots and some half parsnips. And I'm going to do the same thing. Get them started on a pan. 
So just to so start that caramelization on the outside, get them in the oven, get them roasted, and they're gonna release all those natural sweetnesses and juices. So let's start, stick the old parsnips in. Right, so the carrots and parsnips are in. All I'm doing is just getting a nice bit of color on them. Right then, potatoes I'm happy with, so they're gonna go in. I'm gonna put them in the same oven as the lamb, so that's about 200 degrees. But what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna time them, I'm gonna keep an eye on them, and I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks to look out for. So the roast carrots and parsnips, they're gonna go in now. Same thing, I'm not gonna time them. And just keep your eye on the color of the actual carrot and parsnip. If it goes black, you know how to take it out, but if it looks lovely and roasted, that's what we want, but you don't want to char it and burn it. So now I've got the onions, or sorry, the shallots and the garlic and the red wine is reduced down by half. So now what I'm going to do is just turn the heat up on it a little bit more and I'm going to add my chicken stock to it. So this is going to be the base for the gravy and obviously when the lamb's finished cooking, I'm going to strain this off into the pan that the lamb's gone in and I'm going to get that flavour out of there as well. So the last bit of garnish, or one of the last bits of garnish, sweetheart cabbage, Hispy cabbage. Um, I don't like it boiled, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roast it. So all we do, take the heart of the cabbage, going to quarter it. So really you want to still leave that core in the cabbage, because that's what's going to hold it together. And then all I'm going to do is just lightly season this with a bit of salt. And then I've got a frying pan on and I've got oil in it. Not too much, but I can see that it's smoking, so I know that it's hot. Same as the carrots and the parsnips. You start it off in a pan, finish it in the oven. Final bit of veg that I've got. With all the leftovers, I've just used a little bit of carrot and a little bit of swede, and I'm just turning that into a little mash. So all I'm going to do is just mash that up bit of butter, bit of pepper, bit of salt, job done. So everything's coming together really nicely now. Uh, my sweet puree's done, that's all bowled up ready to go. The cabbage is nicely roasted, the carrots and the parsnips are done. Spuds are there as well. So the best way to do it, if you're doing it family style, get it served up in a bowl. It's ready to chuck on a table and let them fend for themselves. Right then, now for the main event. Let's get the lamb out. There she is. So what I'm going to do, I want to rest it. And while it's resting, I'm then going to finish off the, uh, the sauce to go with this. So obviously, it's just come out of the oven. Be very careful. It smells absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to move that to another dish. Leave that to sit in there, just to let it rest. So you think about it, you've just put that in a really hot oven, it's just gone all tight and tense, and now we just want to let it relax and let all the blood flow through it. Let it chill out for a minute. All the onions and garlic is nicely caramelised at the bottom of this pan, and I've got all the juice that's come out. So now what I want to do is just get that going, and obviously, yeah, professional term, deglazing. So I'm just going to get this working on here, just get all that cook down a little bit more, break it down, and then I'm going to add the gravy to it and cook it out a little bit more and then strain it. So obviously, yeah, you probably see that I've left the onion skins on these. Don't worry about it. You're not going to be eating it. You're not going to be digesting it. My eyes are all flavour at the end of the day. It's not going to do you any harm. So now I can hear it nicely roasting. All I'm going to do now is just strain my stock into there. So with the shallots and garlic that I've sweated off first time round, I don't really want to use that anymore. Their job's done. So all I'm going to do now is get rid of that, move the juices around in this tray for a little bit more, and then transfer it back to the pan. So moving it all around, getting all those lovely bits off the bottom. So really what you should be doing is doing half the job of cleaning right now by releasing all that caramelization off the bottom of the tray. So that is that. Now all I'm going to do, turn a hob off, now I'm going to strain all that juice back into the original pan. Now what you've got to do, just push down on all that stuff, 
get as much of that juice out as you can because that is all flavour. Right then, so everything has come together beautifully. So I've got my potatoes ready, got my roasted root veg ready, the roasted cabbage, carrot and sweet mash, gravy's coming down really nicely and the lamb has been rested beautifully. So, leg of lamb, everyone's going to worry a little bit about how you're going to get as much meat off this as you can. Don't worry about it because you'll get what you want off when you get it off. So all I'm going to do, hold it from the top and I'm just going to carve down it. Now you'll feel when you hit bone, which is fine, but just keep working around it and just cut it nicely. And then, all you want to do is put a bit on a plate. So all you're going to do is just make sure, I'm a big lad, obviously I'm going to have a stonking portion. Just fill the plate, get it all on there. Start with your meat first, because that is the main focal point, and then just work everything else around it. And then this is ideal for an Easter Sunday lunch. And there we have it. Roast leg of lamb with all the trimmings.